One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the I'm going to stop the recording just to make sure. Anyway, let's get started. Oh, oh crap. This is too far over. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about greed, but not just greed. I just, there's a, there, there's a, there's something I really want to say, but it fits in with greed. So I'm kind of lumping it in here with greed because I haven't ever made a greed webinar. So, um, you know, this way I can, it's one of those, I can link to greed and, and there's also, and there's something that ties in really well with greed that I want to talk about. So yeah, we're going to be talking about greed today and why, and, and, and why and how it's so fucking shitty and how you deal with it. Anyway, so yeah, to the moon, I, it's still the, to the moon market. But anyway, um, yeah, so if this is your first webinar, welcome. Oh, shit. I also made a mistake. The, the webinar that's going to help you with this one, that was last week's and I didn't change this. The webinar that's going to help you with this one is my hesitation webinar. All right. Current slide. All right, so the webinar that's going to help you with here is the hesitation webinar. And so if this is your first webinar, welcome. I'm going to be going over the market sentiment this week. We'll go over the key traders of the week and kind of discuss where, you know, where where I think the market's at. We can talk about it. Um, we'll go over any of the movers kind of, you know, like where, where were some good entries and good exits on, on maybe some trades. Then I have a rant that I want to go over um, and it ties in with greed. And then we're going to get into the heart and soul of greed. <laughs> it's a clap. It just it just helps you. Uh, like I just know that what I talked about in there will kind of link up with this one. So like if you know if you're watching this one, if you watch hesitation first and then this one, it it'll kind of be like two peas in a pod. And then um, we'll have a Q and A at the end <clears throat> or throughout the session. Just uh, remind me if I keep missing questions. It looks like you've been a show on your nose from some. <laughs> All right, so where the fuck are we at? Holy shit. <clears throat> so this week has been really fucking cool, really fucking uh, different. Um, these last couple weeks, really. But um, yeah, last week, th that's when the market kind of took back its storm from the GME panic, right? Last Because two weeks ago, that was that GME kind of craze. And then last week, GME tanked, or two weeks ago, GME tanked. And so last week, we could have like a regular market again regular market again and that's kind of what we got right the market stabilized the overall market bounced last week uh sm small caps started popping again no it wasn't just the amc the bbs the nokias right it was all of that stuff gone you know all that that positive news of, of vaccinations came out um where like i think like 30 million americans or something that week you know all that came out and i was kind of having some speculation last week of whether or not reddit would launched second attacks on the market. And I think, now obviously hindsight's 2020. Uh, it looks like that's over. It doesn't look like they're gonna have much influence. And I don't know if it's because everybody lost their money, right? I, I, re I mean, I'm sure that's part of it. I'm sure maybe a whole lot of people have learned what the stock market does to stocks that are up that much and why you have to sell and why this diamond hands is kind of bullshit, right? I think, you know, maybe they learned that. And so like people know the story already. And, you know, also there's been a couple new chat rooms that have joined the fray. And so that's also deviating. So like Reddit, I think like so far as of right now, I think it's basically going to be a thing of the past. I don't think we're going to get this whole Wall Street, Wall Street bets warriors again. Um, but anyway, that's what I think of as right now. But, um, you know, and, and like I said last week, I thought that the market was telling us that they're prepared for the next Reddit kind of swamp if, if they do get on one. And it seems like the market is prepared because we haven't seen another one. Right. And all yeah, yeah. Weed hype was weed hype kind of replaced it right there instead. And so, you know, like, you know, so they, it, it's almost like Reddit kind of bandwagon on that one. So, you know, I, I foresaw a smoother write up and, and I think we got that like, uh, last this week, we definitely had a nice smooth ride up, but lately this, you know, and we could see some of the best of the market, which I think we've seen, we've seen a lot of poppers. And this is what I kind of call the everyone's market where like 
now we're starting to see some some faders and some rippers you know you kind of don't know what's kind of going to happen and that's and that's um that's what you really want like as a trader with edge you you want you want everybody guessing because then you can use your technical analysis skills and your risk management skills to perform when and when everyone else is creating um, the opportunity for you by um, getting overzealous on the short side or the long side, you can kind of be clear headed. Sure, like I think that the buyer's market is fun. You know, you just buy anything and it goes up, but not everyone is, right? Not everyone's the longer. So I think the everyone's market is like, that's why I call it the everyone's market. It makes everyone happy. This week though, I w if you've been paying attention to the SPY at all, there, there definitely seems to be in the overall market a little bit of, I almost want to say there's a little bit of fear going on. And if any of you guys who trade large caps kind of know this or have seen this. And like, it seems to be, I think, freaking a little people out. And a, a quote I said the other day is like, as a joke, I said, will ever like, will everyone stop freaking out so that I can stop freaking out or something like that's a trader's mindset. Like I wish everyone stopped freaking out so I can start freaking out. And that, that, that was like basically a joke about my kind of take on the market. Like these, these kind of like market drops that we've been seeing on the SPY. And you see this kind of, the, you kind of see these market drops like a couple of days ago and today, or yesterday and today, like we had this like death drop and we barely recovered. And then today was kind of deja vu. It's literally the same chart, midday death drop, and then kind of recover, right? It's literally like deja vu yesterday and today. And these kind of like map, these kind of panics, I think are happening. Uh, because look at this. I, I honestly think this is purely psychological. I think people see this and are af like, they're literally getting profit taking FOMO. People are getting profit taking FOMO. People are afraid. What if this is the top? And you have to say, like, if you zoom out on the, on the daily here and you just kind of look, look at that, that doesn't look too good, right? That, that like slam. And then another one, like when you like just boom, that kind of looks floppy, but this always happens at the top guys. You know, if you zoom out, like, dude, we're fine. You zoom out and we're fine. And that's why I think they're getting bought up because I don't think like panic is necessarily warranted, but like you do have to admit like this, like that five minute chart that I just showed you kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Just death drop. You know, it just, it kind of looks toppy. Right. And like, I think this is something similar that we can just kind of see just a couple of fear drops before it continue higher. But honestly, like if, even if we do pull back like the 380 reset, like 375, 380, it's not going to be the end of the world. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at my investing club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up, back to the video. Oh dude, me too. I want the market to just keep flying high, but like I talked to Joe this week too and Joe's like, you know, I hate it when the market goes straight up because when the market just goes straight up, it's doomed to have these fucking panics. But here's the thing guys, if you guys are a large cap trader at all, you could benefit from it. Like, when, when risk starts to get too heavy, like when things start to go kind of parabolic, if you can not be in the market, then you can capitalize on these death drops, on these fear panics for your good prices, right? And that's what Joe and I were kind of talking about. Like, you know, you kind of hate when it goes up too fast, but at least that means it's going to panic, which gives you some good kind of entry material. Um, and that's kind of what I think is going on here. Like, I'm not like... I'm not going to be the guru here and say, like, oh, yeah, it's going to come down. I just don't think that there's anything worth worrying about. But I think all this is, is it kind of looks like a top. But the thing is, I also think that there's another bullish factor on the market. I think the market wants to see 400. But people are afraid that 400 is the top. So it's kind of having these, like, prove to me that we're not going to drop, right? Prove to me that we're not going to drop so I can buy here for the 400 and, God forbid, 420, 420, 69 price that's now such a meme that like the stock market is actually close to realizing a 420 price yeah i like i almost think it has to happen so like we can't tank yet <laughs> like i don't think we can tank yet like we got to get there and then maybe 420 can be like a temporary top but <laughs> chill back to 200.
But yeah, basically, like I think people are freaking out, you know, that we're going to have a pullback, right? You know, these two market tanks, they both recovered. You know, I do think that it's just because the SPY looks first, you're putting in 420 calls tomorrow. Um, but yeah, like I, because of this, like I feel like the market is a little bit unstable, just like slightly, not too much because the VIX, like if you look at the, the VIX ETFs and the VIX, um, the, the index, they're fine. Like I think that shows that there's overall not something serious to worry about. Um, I think like the VIX will start going up if we start getting under 375. That's when some real fear will happen. This just feels like paranoia to me um, due to like the whole like, man, dude, literally all of the new market participants like SNDL literally going from like, you know, 50 cents to like $4, you know, on we're seeing billion dollar volume shares. GME was super on tip. We're just, you know, Robin Hooders are trading. Like there's all this like, there's a whole bunch of kind of slightly in, unstable variables affecting the market right now. And so that's kind of what I think, and it's happening at the top. And so it's very, you know, it's, a, it's very paranoid, I feel. I'm a little paranoid. I'm just like, come on, don't end. I don't want this market to end. Oh, fuck, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid it's gonna end. I love this market. Like, I don't want it to end, but maybe it will. And that kind of manifested in my trading to, again, like a little bit today too. I think I was half right, but uh, that, that, that fear is definitely kind of there. Um, I, I read on Twitter, someone saying I'm partying right next to the door. So when, yeah, so when the, yeah. And so that, yeah. And, that, and but the thing is people don't have that mentality when we're surging. People only have that mentality when we slow down the surge and now there's fear of the drop. And that's what I think that this kind of slowdown is all about. Uh, and like small cap market is following, right? Last week we were kind of in a post high because I don't think you can get any more euphoric than we had two weeks ago. I think that's literally as high as you're going to get. Um, <laughs> hope we're just starting the bubble. Yes, buy 600. Make the money and then and then retire. We need our bubble. The, you know, the, there was a 2000s bubble and then the, the, the weed hype, like on the, the OTC bubble. We need our bubble. <laughs> we need our buy everything to the moon because Robin Hooders are getting stimped. Stimuli, stimulized, what's the word? Stimulated, stimulized. They're getting stimulated and it's time to buy everything to the moon. Yeah, we want our bubble. And so in the small cap market, I was really, <laughs> put that on my bio. Uh, in the small cap market, right, we definitely saw the increased market participants, right? Last week, that was a sheer understatement that the amount of volume we saw on those like three runners that I mentioned, like Time, CATB, and MBRX, I think was the other one. They're kind of sheer, like just straight up, just volume attacking the ask really that we saw last week, really just kind of proved how many people there are trading right now. And so um, I did think that a minor sell-off was due, but because the market was celebrating this, um, the, it, you know, the fact that it got re, you know, that the market got its mojo back, that it could be delayed, now I think we're starting to see it, you know, it, you know, like I, I don't think that the selling market is the, the long market is over, but I, like a minor, like just cool down is just fucking warranted on all of the just buy anything and it'll go up kind of market that we've been seeing. Um, and honestly, this is the perfect time to have it. Like, I, no, like, I mean, I know, yeah, Harry's like, no cool down, right? But the thing is, like, we, yeah, we need a cool down so that we it can happen again. Is my feeling kind of like what Joe, like we kind of the other uh, like this way we can have a whole new one. But the thing is, is like going into a holiday weekend, guys, it's the perfect time because people are ready to chill anyway. So if if it kind of happens during the holiday week, it almost like makes it happen in the same time, right? So it's like um, we don't have to suffer too kind of cool downs because holiday weeks always kind of slow things down because people kind of leave. Yeah, tomorrow definitely could be sketchy. Are there still long are there still opportunities for longs in a bear market? I have no fucking idea. I've never I've never traded in a bear market. Started trading in 2015 and I've never experienced a bear market. I, I like since 2015 there has been no I honestly don't know. Like I can't tell you. I, I'm I'm guessing just because there's always something that goes up, but yeah.
no bear market. I mean, this is COVID. <laughs> and like there was this recovered right away, covered in like a month. Like I've never traded in the bear market. Like I don't, I don't even call this. It's like what October. <laughs> it's like a, it's like after October uh, to the end of the year, and then and then January is up. It's not even. Well, I I mean a sustained bear market. I mean this is th what happened in March was it over in a month. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of, I, I mean like a sustained, like a, you know, just something where the sentiment, like we're, we're, the thing is when you have a, when you have a just straight uptick, you're going to have these, like, you're going to have dips, right? And that's what these kind of are. Like it's a panic dip, but it's not sustained. Like it, it recovered right away. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.